Welcome to North Dakota Hockey Central, your home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Seinert. Coming up, we'll recap the latest chapter in the North Dakota-Minnesota Duluth rivalry with head coach Brad Berry and see what steps his team takes after practice to fine-tune their game. First, though, we're happy to bring you the latest episode of UND Hockey's web series, Through These Doors. The tradition of UND hockey stretches throughout generations. It goes back a long way. Uh, my playing days were back in the old, uh, you know, it was the old, old barn. It was uh, Quonset, actually, and with no heat. <laughs> so uh, there were many times when we practiced, uh, we would go up in shifts because it was 20 below outside, it was 20 below inside. In the last, or my third year, uh, before I went pro, uh, they built the old Ralph, and so I had one year with heat <laughs> in a boiled plane, and uh, it, it, was, it was a great experience. It's hard to, to tell you exactly what the culture is, but it's it's just outstanding. I mean, uh, there's been a lot of pro guys that have come through here, a lot of a lot of men that have, have graduated from the University of North Dakota and went on to, to bigger, better things. And I think if I had some of the uh, most important things that I took away with it, uh, you don't remember the goals, the assists, but you remember the, the relationships that you've built over the many, many years. Former UND players Jeff Bowen and Dennis Johnson identify with the present day experiences of their sons, Dixon and Casey. There really isn't a whole lot of a difference in the fact that, you know, hockey is hockey. I am really glad and proud, you know, for him to be playing here and have played here for four years. That's, that's fantastic. On the ice, it's just being here practice day by day, you get better, you do skills with all the coaches, you put in all the extra work, and I think it's just, our culture here is where you get better every day, and I think that's definitely something that everyone's doing, and it's just helped me throughout the four years. I think his heart was in North Dakota from day one. He he grew up here as a little boy watching, and was a fan, and, and was around the rink a lot when, when, when I coached here. So I think it was a done deal a long time ago, if he was ever going to reach that level that he could, could compete at this level. Sometimes it can be difficult to maintain a coach versus dad balance. Early on, he, he coached me all the way up, and uh, uh, nowadays, I guess it's uh, he kind of coached me enough, and he just kind of lets me be myself and uh, learn from the coaches here and stuff like that. And he tries to stay out of it as much as he can, but uh, no, I, he he helps me a lot. So. When I watch from a dad's perspective and then also as a former player and coach, it's sometimes hard uh, certain circumstances, but we have an understanding and, and uh, I just let him be and he's the man he's become and the player he's become because of the coaching staff here. Well, let's just say uh, I've probably uh, bit my lip way too many times, uh, you know, and uh, my, my tongue and <laughs> everything because not wanting, you know, to uh, so to, you know, uh, be an influence on him because, you know, he's got coaches and, and good coaches. And uh, I don't want to interfere with what they're telling him to what, you know, 
my experiences were and everything. And uh, I think, you know, he's, look how he's progressed and look, you know, four years of playing here, that's tremendous. Watching the two grow into young men while playing close to home makes for a special experience overall. What a tremendous thing to think of watching your son playing at this level, uh, you know, at home, being able to make every game and, you know, and, and that type of thing. Yeah, just kind of, well, it didn't really stay in the background, but, you know, I let him make up his, his own mind and, and he definitely wanted to play here. Which was, it was great for us. It's been a, a real pleasurable experience for his mother and I and our family. Um, very proud of him. He's done a great job. Um, I think the, the maturity level is, is quite a bit different from his freshman year to his senior year. Much more of a leader and you can tell he plays with a lot more confidence now. Special thanks to Cassie Niles, Tyler Hasted, and the entire Through These Doors team for their work. Time now for a break, but when North Dakota Hockey Central returns, Brad Berry stops by to talk us through the ups and downs of a wild weekend on the shores of Lake Superior. That's next. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central, where we are proud, as always, to be joined by UND head coach Brad Berry from inside Ralph Engelstad Arena. Brad, thanks for the time today. Absolutely, Alex. This past weekend saw you head to Duluth for a big series with the two-time defending national champs. Now that the dust has settled a bit, what did you learn about your team from these two games against the Bulldogs? Well, that's playoff hockey at its best, probably. Uh, they were both hard-heavy games, uh, two very similar teams, the way they play each other. Um, situations where we were up both times in games uh, and we won one and we uh, and we lost one and uh, I think we learned a little bit about ourselves about how we have to play for a 60 minute time frame to uh, to get a win and uh, and again it was uh, it was great because it got us uh, going as far as how to play in the postseason here because that's what we're gonna see. Game one on Friday started well enough as you led 3-1 Midred through the seconds, but UMD would score five unanswered over the next 20 minutes of action to really turn the game around. What happens during that stretch, Brad? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, uh, we had the, the game fully in grasp at 3-1. I think we had a couple opportunities even to make it 4-1. Uh, but, you know, a team like has high character. We have high character. They have high character. They, they never gave up. Um, they made the most of an opportunity. Uh, we were on the power play. We didn't execute very well. Uh, turned over a puck. They got on a, on a breakaway and ended up getting a, a goal, which gave momentum. Then they got on a power play. They score another goal on a power play, so now it's a tie game. But I think the real, the real one that kind of hurt was at the end of the second period on Friday night when we turned over a couple pucks in the neutral zone and they scored with uh, in the last minute of play, which is uh, absolute no-no in hockey, giving up a goal in the last minute and uh, gave them momentum in the third. And, and I think one of the things that led into the win for them was we chased the game the wrong way. Instead of being patient and staying with our structure, I think we tried to do a little bit more individually as far as uh, doing more than your job and I know that's uh, caring for the team but it you know it, at the end of the day everybody has to do their job and belief in the way they uh, they have to do it and uh, on Saturday night we were more patient. Yeah, game two was a much tighter game from start to finish. What defensive adjustments did you make to limit Duluth's chances in the offensive end? Probably just taking away a little bit of time and space but in saying that I think protecting the puck or, or, or puck management you know uh, you know, when we have pucks, it means the other team doesn't, and, and we didn't turn over as many pucks on Saturday. But when we when they did have the puck, we took away time and space, and I thought we we did a better job of supporting each other. You know, when it's when you have one guy going against another guy for a puck battle, we always had our second guy in there quick and to try to uh, to try to pick the puck up after the first guy uh, eliminated their first guy. So uh, just probably a little bit more support, more layers in our game. 
You trailed 2-1 in the third on Saturday, but got goals from Matt Kierstead and Johnny Tyconic midway through the period to earn the 3-2 win and the series split. Given how things had gone the night before, how big was that win on Saturday night? Yeah, it was huge from a number of occasions, for a number of uh, reasons. Uh, you know, the first one is obviously, uh, uh, you know, winning a game in a tough environment against a good team, uh, preserving the, uh, the split of the series. Uh, Re-establishing a, a lead in the NCHC Penrose chase, uh, uh, staying at the top in the pairwise. There's a number of things that that led into why it was so important to win that game. But I think the most most thing of all of uh, uh, going back to what we talked about the identity of our team, just re-establishing our identity and and making sure that everybody knows that that's how we have to play to win games. The split with the Bulldogs means you still have a healthy six-point lead at the top of the NCHC standings, and you're still first in the pairwise. But things haven't come as easy as they did during the first half. What needs to happen to find that top gear this team was in before Christmas to ensure you maintain this position as things go forward? Well, first of all, I think you just, Alex, you just had it on the head as far as uh, first half of the season. Like, it, the, the season dramatically changes when you flip to the second half. Things get a lot harder. Team systems are a lot better. Uh, there's more urgency in games for points and, 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 and jockeying for pairwise standings. Uh, so again, that's why it's crucial for us to make sure that we're, we're ultra focused and detailed on everybody doing their job and, and doing it for 60 minutes. And, and, and any time that there, there's um, you know, a little ambivalence or, or, or situations where we get away from it, that's where we have to stop right there and, and focus and, and come back to what we are. And uh, I thought our guys did a good job on Saturday night to, uh, to know when that time was. Yeah, certainly. Well, you've alternated starts for Peter Tomey and Adam Scheel in each of the last two series. How do you approach the goaltending situation for this weekend? Well, uh, I think the one thing we know is we have two very good goaltenders now that uh, that can viably go in the net and do a job, and uh, and I think that's a good thing. Competition brings out the best in everybody, and I think you know going through a, a week of practice, we'll uh, we'll determine who's going to go in on Friday here. But in saying that, like I said, it's it's no hesitation at all. Uh, knowing that we have uh, two very good options going. CC has been swept in back-to-back -back weekends and has just one win in the new year, but you know how talented that team is despite their current form, and I, I can't see you taking them lightly this weekend. Not at all. Uh, you know, we, we, they've been a tough opponent for the last few years here, and uh, you know, they've got some very gifted offensive players in their group, both on forward and defense. Uh, we got to make sure that you know we play our game the way we need to, and uh, and and bring uh, our strengths to the table, and and making sure that it you know it's it's about us on how we have to play in our building here, and again being very respectful and mindful and uh, of, of what they can do uh, as a team too. So like I said, it's uh, it's going to be a focus of ours, knowing that there's two games before the break. Uh, that we have to have ultra focus here. Well, we are excited to see that focus and your team back home for another important NCHC weekend. Thanks again for the time. Best of luck against the Tigers. Yeah, thanks again, Alex. Much more to come here on North Dakota Hockey Central, including an inside look at the skills work UND players put in, even when practice is not in session. back. During the course of UND Associate Head Coach Dane Jackson's time in hockey, he's picked up more than a handful of drills that have become staples for current and future players to work on once organized practice is over. This month, Jax was kind enough to show us a few of his favorites, all designed to hone the skills needed to level up on the ice. Have a look. Around the net, just quick touches. A lot of times at our net play, uh, we, t we talk a lot about just one touch. So you find that puck, it's kind of a settle and it's getting it up quickly in front of the net. I'm gonna pass to you and then uh, Alm's gonna pass to you. All right, here we go. Yep. 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 Nice. Good job, Cal, good job there. It's a good start. Yonner, why don't you do one here? Let's try to go do one. We have a small moment to handle a puck. But we want to try to handle that thing, settle it, get it upstairs quickly, and always kind of uh, be on our toes. We don't want to be flat-footed. We don't want to be kind of straight-legged. We want to be on our toes, be enlightened our feet, ready to kind of adjust the pucks, handle them, get them upstairs quickly. Let's do our stick front kind of battle drill, all right? Smitty, why don't you start? Smith dog. So I'm just going to have a stick on here. You're going to come under. Hip. Good job. Hip. Good job. Hip. It's all right. Hip. 
All right, not bad, not bad. Who's up, who's up? How's your editing skills, boys? I'd like a righty shooting out here if we could, so we can be hammering one-timers. Juddy, you looking to hammer pucks, all right? So you, you can kind of move anywhere in here. That's it, that's it, boys. Move your feet, move, move your feet. That's it, that's it. Made for TV, made for TV. Knock them out of the air, knock the puck out of the air with the kind of a flat bounce, and then not with an evasive bounce where it's kind of going anywhere. Kind of call those the Johnny Taves drills. Johnny and I would do those all the time where just throw pucks at them. So no matter where a puck comes, if it's in his skates, if he's got to knock it down, if it's in the air, he's, uh, those are kind of that, that's kind of a Taves. Master, you're shooting, Cowie, you're passing using your eyes as the weapon. So one of the things we talk about is as we're passing, we don't want to stare down the guy we're passing to. Same as a good quarterback, right? You never, you never eyeball the guy you're gonna to pass to. You're trying to use your eyes as the weapon. So I'm looking here, but I know I want to pass there. So for the passer, eyes as the weapon, being evasive with our eyes. Second guy, a guy that's the shooter, trying to obviously one time whenever we can, adjust with our feet, one time those pucks whenever we can, never stick handle. One timing is the best. If it's not a position you can one time that puck, ability to keep it on the front of your tapes. We say no, uh, stick handling or no dusting so you don't go over the top of it you just keep that puck on your forehand and you're always trying to shoot as quick as we can because the quicker we shoot the better chance we have of scoring one of the concepts we work on a lot is being evasive uh, at, on entry you know whenever we can we want to try to get the middle of the ice so if we're coming down the wall if we can make an evasive move to the middle that's advantage us. We can start getting some crisscrossing, just makes confusion for the D. So on entry, really trying to get the line. And if we have space to skate or pass laterally, that's definitely a concept we're looking at. Doing good, doing good here. Almost done, boys. Last, last drill of the day, promise. I call it a Philly drive. So it was kind of an evasive through me. They attacked through the coach, kind of went around the water bottle. So you try to get under the stick, drive, get the puck from the bad ice to the good ice. Good job. Okay, very, very last. Do a couple tips and you're done. Kind of our rule is screen first, tip second, rebound third. So the biggest thing that we do, we want to get in the goalie's eyes, get right with our heels on the paint, maybe a little bit out, and we want to get that, that our stick kind of positioned out and free so it's not getting tied up by a defender. We're looking to tip down and in, stick out early, track that puck all the way in. The only time we're tipping up is if a puck's right on the ice and we're going to try to open our blade up and try to elevate that puck above the top. Good for the day. Thanks for your time, man. As you might have guessed while watching that, Dane is a tough time picking the drills he likes best. So we more or less had the guys do all of them this past week. That extra work by Jackson and his players has certainly paid off as UND recently finished the decade as the winningest men's college hockey program of the 2010s. We are back with more North Dakota Hockey Central after this, including a preview of North Dakota's upcoming series with Colorado College from those who know the rivalry from both sides. Let's get you caught up on what's happening in college hockey around the nation, starting with this week's USCHO.com poll. Cornell picked up a win and a tie this weekend against two ranked opponents in Dartmouth and Harvard, good enough to remain number one for the second week running, just one spot ahead of UND. At the other end of the poll, Bemidji State is now ranked for the first time this year, running the number of North Dakota opponents to find a spot in the top 20 to four for the week and nine total this season. Meanwhile, UND remains number one in the pairwise after momentarily falling to number three after Friday's loss in Duluth. UMD is still on the promising side of the bubble in 12th, while Western Michigan and Omaha have work to do, but do now sit 22nd and 24th respectively. In the latest NCHC table, UND's lead at the top has been trimmed to six thanks to another six-point weekend for the Pioneers, who have now gone 11 games in a row without defeat. The bigger news, though, is the separation that's forming in the race for home ice in the conference quarterfinals, as the gap between fourth and fifth is now seven points, while Western has a 10-point lead on St. Cloud and a 15-point gap on CC with 10 games to play. 
The big series this weekend is in the Rockies as DU hosts Duluth in a matchup of top 10 teams and the two most likely challengers to UND's Penrose Cup aspirations. Elsewhere, Western heads to Omaha on a four-game winning streak in a potential NCHC first-round preview, while Miami goes to the Brooks Center to play a St. Cloud State team that has won three of their last four at home. North Dakota knows all about winning on home ice as well, as UND's gone 12-1-0 inside Ralph Engelstad Arena this season. They will host last place Colorado College this weekend in the only meeting between the two teams this regular season, a fact that is not lost on former Tiger Weston Mashad and former Fighting Hawk Chris Wilkie. Yeah, I mean, it's been one of the um, places and uh, spots I've marked on the calendar all year, you know, uh, this weekend and last weekend versus Duluth, you know, going home and then uh, now playing uh, CC at um, home here is something special, you know. I'm very excited to play them, past teammates, past coaches, everything like that, so uh, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I think it's always um, exciting to come back. I think it's a it's a date that's, that's circled early in the year when it comes out, and um, it's just always exciting to come back and, and play against old teammates and um, play, in the, play in the Ralphie and obviously unbelievable um, rank and experience and um, a little different to be on the other side of it, but um, it's always an exciting weekend and I look forward to it a lot. The Mashad Wilkie subplot, just one of the many reasons to catch this series this weekend, either in the Ralph or here on Midco Sports Network. Our live coverage begins Friday at 7.30 p.m. and continues Saturday at 7 p.m. for game number two. We hope you join us for UND versus CC this weekend and again next week on another edition of North Dakota Hockey Central. Until then, I'm Alex Seinert. On behalf of all of us in Midco SN, thanks for watching. We'll see you at the Ralph.